Welcome to The O Show, your number one podcast for everything training, mindset, and nutrition. I am your host, Oren Makari, and it is my goal to help you access the best information around to allow you to kick ass in the gym, in the kitchen, and most importantly, in your head. Between my own experiences and those of my amazing guests, I'm confident we will do that. So let's strap in and level up your life starting right now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Welcome to today's episode of The O Show. This is your host, as always, Oren McCary, and today I am joined on by another one of my Scottish friends. He's been on the podcast before. We have Mr. Matt Peacock from We Are Optimized. How are we, Matt? Thank you, mate. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, it's awesome to have you on, and if they recognize the name, it's because you've been on before when you were branded as the Muscle Mindset Coach. Um, that was probably middle of last year during COVID, I want to say, at some stage in, in 2020. So that episode went down pretty well. I think even about 68 weeks after that episode, people were still tagging me or sending me an, an inbox saying this episode was really good. So um, I think people will enjoy what we're going to talk about today, and I'm looking forward to getting into it. To hear it, I'm glad people enjoyed the last one. I think that was, we were still in the old house, so it wasn't yesterday. It was at least six months ago. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, um, so I can't remember what we talked about there. I think it was about, you know, your morning routines and everything. But one other area that you really excel in is optimizing human performance by uh, measures that Previously, like we could we could, could, could call it biohacking, okay? And previously, this was popularized by guys like Dave Asprey and Ben Pakulski to an extent, who were the people who were trying to push human performance and maximizing all these areas of your life, brain capacity, physi physiological, physique-wise, um, to their absolute limits. And you've obviously got some good tactics for that and some gadgets that you use. So I thought no better man to talk on by beginning in biohacking, Absolutely, mate. I think it's one of those things that, like, like I've always been interested in it. Um, but I think it's it was kind of a fringe, kind of a niche thing, and you were considered a bit of a weirdo if you were kind of, and also often considered to be like, oh, what a waste of time, what a waste of money. But like over the last, I'd say, five years, there's been a real rise in, in kind of popularity of it, and people understand the word now. But actually, like to kick it off, I feel like my issue still lies with the word biohacking like I don't really like it so a while ago I looked into kind of like explaining this to my clients and that the word like hack if you like define hack on on google it says gain unauthorized access to data or a computer system and I feel like hack does have negative connotations it's like that unauthorized element of it and I kind of like I think a biohacking has got a bit of a a bit of a wank following for want of a better way of describing it. Where, <laughs> you know I mean, it's like, I feel like I disagree with it as a term. I feel like it's just become some cliched nonsense term. So I was like, cool, what is it that we're actually doing? And I'm like, okay, so what if it was like bio optimization? Because that seems like it's got a more positive undertone to it. And then it's okay. So if we're talking, if we're replacing the word hack with the word optimize, what is the definition of optimize so we can see where we're kind of moving this and it basically if you if you look on the internet dictionary it's like make the best or most effective use of a situation or resource and i feel like that now has a more positive connotation rather than yeah. unauthorized yeah. use of something and i feel like also it starts to separate us from biohacking which again has become a, a cliche a nothing i just uh everyone says it but nobody really knows what it means kind of phrase Okay, yeah, yeah, I like that. It's a different way to think about it. And when you think about the dictionary terms, the like optimize definitely fits. Well, one, it, it fits, it flows off the tongue, bio-optimization or whatever, or bio-optimize. And it also has the more positive connotation with the experience, which is to optimize everything that goes on with inside the biology. So let's talk about... Say a client comes to you and they're, you think they could benefit from some of this stuff. Where, what would you employ and how do you sort of decide how deep to go with a client? I think like most clients will tell you how, oh, oh, how deep they want to go. So she said, um, I think that <laughs> most clients will give you a feel for how deep they want to go. I think if you start to explain some things to some clients, they start to get to the point where they're like, listen, mate, like what? Like, is there actually any merit in this? 
And I think it, like like most things in life, it's just like how invested someone is in it. But I think the way to overcome that is if you can give a client some, let's just call them biohacks for the sake of this this episode, seeing as we've, we've gone ahead and started with that. Like if you can give some a client some biohacks or bio optimizers or whatever you want to call them, that gets them some immediate return without even really telling them or labeling them that. So you yeah. kind of a bit underhanded. I, I guess it's a bit sneaky. You just don't label it. It doesn't need a sticker. Don't give it a sticker. Don't give it a name. Give them some strategies to help them with something that they are experiencing, which is causing them, you know, low energy and, or, or a poor stomach or poor sleep, any of the above. And if you can fix them, then you can, then usually you get the buy-in and they're happy to try pretty much the more obscure stuff. So I think that how, how deep do you go? You let the client kind of dictate where they're at. Some people need the whole kitchen sink thrown at them, as you'll know from coaching clients. But some people you know, you can fix just their sleep and all of a sudden everything else starts to fall into place. So I guess it is by client by client basis. Yep. Yep. Okay. And what would be the easiest things that we can potentially look at fixing? You're talking about, you know, poor sleep, dodgy tummy, low energy. What do you think would have the biggest bang for your buck of somebody coming in fresh you know, typical client, smash the shit, you know, can't sleep, bad digestion. What's the easiest fix and how can we get that buy-in from them as easy as possible then? So I'm going to give you the politics answer and then we'll go into <laughs> it. Right? So because I think there's a really important part of the conversation where potentially about dangerously skirting around and I don't want to skirt around it because I have this discussion with every client. So what we need to understand about like bio-optimization, biohacking, any of this is that so it's, it's probably more um, obvious in my market because I only work with men. And I think with men, they're very guilty of wanting the result right now all the time. So it's like if you give them a supplement, a strategy, and it doesn't make them six inches taller overnight, they're like, <laughs> hey, this is shit. Like, what, what's this yeah. about? So I think like that's a really important point to, 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 to mark before we get into like, you know, what, what's the biggest bang for our buck? I think is that we have to remember that biohacking or bio-optimization only really works in the long term. Like you have to play the long game to get the big results. And I think the, the best way I can describe this, and as I describe it to my clients, I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the magic penny, but I use this analogy every single time and it, and it seems to it seems to work. So basically I say to the clients, like if we talk about, compound interest the way you would in a savings account in the bank the same applies to anything that you're going to apply to your body like the reason why you have the muscle mass you have now is because of 15 years of consistent training i'm just mm -hmm. guessing that's roughly how yeah. long you've been training based on your age so it's not because you trained one year very very well or however many years you've been in Perth it's not just that it's everything right it's the whole shoot and match so when we look at the magic penny I, I say to my clients every single time right if I was to give you two options you can have two thousand pounds in cash right now or I'll give you one penny that doubles in value for 31 days the look on your face says you've not heard this which is great <laughs> two grand right now or a penny that doubles in value for 31 days and you're like right and consecutive days but so you start to do the math and you're like one pence two pence four pence eight pence 16 pence you're like 32 pence this is a terrible deal like this is going to be like four pound 50 at the end so you're like i'll take the two grand and like most people first and foremost understand that there's probably some sort of smoke and mirrors going on here so they're like the penny because they know fine well that there's something i'm being <laughs> And, but I think if you ask them, like, what is your gut reaction? They're like the two grand. So if you take that penny and it doubles and it, so it compounds, the number at the end of 31 consecutive days is £10,737,418.23. Holy shit, I did not see that Absolutely number coming. Absolutely bonkers, right? And I think that right there is the only argument I ever really need for compounding. Is like, with clients, you'll know yourself even your more adherent clients, maybe they have three good weeks and then one mediocre one, then another three good ones and one shit one, and then three good ones and then a, another mediocre one. We're basically cutting the head off your, your magic penny every three weeks. So we need to be very, very careful with that. So I think the most important point I can make about any of the stuff that we'll discuss is that unless you stick with it in a regimented fashion, day to day, every fucking day, not just when it feels like you fancy doing it, then you'll probably not see the re result that it you know, promises on the tin. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah 100%.
So that usually blows the lid clean off clients when they're like, right, okay, I'm in. I'm in for compounding, right? Oh, so, man, it blew it. I was like, what, what amount is it going to be? Like four or five grand? What's it going to get to here? And he said 10 million or whatever. I was like, holy okay. shit. So like, yeah, if you Google, I think like the best, there's a really good um, graphic on it. If you Google the magical penny, you'll see that the more detailed graphic rather than the magic penny. If you put magical penny compound interest, you'll see this kind of snaking diagram. Yeah, uh, it's blue and yellow if anyone's wanting to find it. And it'll show you the, the math's wild. Anyway, um, bringing that all back around to like, right, Matt, stop talking and tell me something I can do. I think like, I, I always think about like, I get asked this question quite a lot from clients, like what are the top ones? Like, what should we all be doing? I think like light is probably the most overlooked one. Um, and I think it's like, none of these are going to be particularly big and sexy. And none of them, I think people want some crazy, you know, if you stand on your head and like, just like, oh, only walk on your left foot uh, like, or something stupid like that, then you're going to get some benefit. No, just get some daylight exposure at the right time. So I think as an industry, we've moved a lot towards blocking the blue light and understanding that, that blue light is probably not something that we need to be bathing in, especially post sunset or around sunset. So you'll see, I know you've got a set of orange blue light blocking glasses yep. as I do. And then I've got a set of clear ones that I wear from about midday onwards at my desk and not so much in the morning as it is just now. Um, so blocking blue light definitely helps with circadian rhythm. So rather, if we think about how we've evolved, we've evolved to wake and sleep with the sun. So when we think about if we're going to sleep with the sun, there was no light. Like beyond sunset, it's very orange light in the spectrum and at sunset and then it's actual darkness. Whereas these days there's just, there's perpetual light. It's omnipresent and it's always fluorescent it's the screens it's the lights in the house it's like i've got bloody leds on in the office like there's just always yeah. blue light so because of the omnipresence of blue light we've kind of lost that ability that 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 orange light in the spectrum the lack of blue light rather creates a, a spike in melatonin which will help us fall asleep but when we don't have that natural drop in blue light it means that we're actually keeping the blue light in the in our artificial atmosphere thus not actually creating melatonin and then we've got all these problems that have people who have problems falling asleep not hugely surprising so yes you look like edgar david's love child <laughs> with elton john it's not a great look but i think <laughs> you, know, you need to understand that like for most people they, they do resist initially my clients but i'm like who's going to see you like who on earth are you spending time with especially in the last year beyond sunset nobody your missus like who cares like get them on i think like the easiest thing to do beyond the glasses though is to actually just temper down the time you spend with screens and it's again it's not big it's not sexy it's probably quite boring for a lot of people but coming away from screens thinking about the lighting in your house like we'll try to use only side lamps i mean something like a salt lamp would be absolutely perfect because it's you know kind of that orangey light that you're getting from it um i mean if you want to go full boon i like use candles like tell me you're not going to be sleepier in that kind of an environment like if you, yeah. you already can feel the effects of it without me telling you it's real so i think like controlling blue light in the evenings is absolutely essential um and if not only that from a side note on there most people spend far too much time working in the evening so if we're kind of blocking and banning the use of electric uh, electric devices which i call electronic sunset thanks to luke lehman effectively we're stopping them from working so we're removing the stimulus and the stress from their life. So not only have we helped with the melatonin production from a chemical and neurotransmitter standpoint, but we've also removed the stress. So from a, again, from a chemical and neurotransmitter standpoint where we've brought cortisol down, which we need for, for proper sleep. So that's definitely the kind of part about the light that I think is most well known and most kind of well implemented. But I think the other end of the spectrum, which you and I already chatted about is like actually wanting blue light in the morning. Like it's not the enemy, it's not the bad guy. I think it's been made out to be the bad guy because everyone knows about blue light blocking. But what about in the morning? Like for me, you want blue light in the morning. Like that's again, it's how we evolved to wake, to wake with the sun when there was most blue light in the spectrum. So if you can get outdoors in the morning, like if you live with you, like great, you can get outdoors. There's going to be sunshine in the morning. As you know, over here, a little bit different by the, the, 36 minutes of daytime that we get in Scotland in the winter is not really great. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You wake up in darkness, you live in darkness, you go, you might as well live in a cave. Yeah. But it, like this time of the year, like I can get outside the front garden where the sun comes up and I can sit with my coffee and get some sunlight. But as you know, I tend to get up probably before sunrise most days. So we can start to use artificial devices like you might have sat on the desk, as you know, because I was talking about it before. 
Like these are great. Like I highly rate them. That you look like you're going to the dentist. I mean, you look like an absolute moron. It's not a great look. I mean, look, at, look at the neck of them, mate. But so these are called. The, these are actually from Australia. So they're called the Re Timer, R E hyphen Timer, um, and they're they're yeah. dead good, mate. I, I highly rate them. So effectively, what they do is. I don't know if I can turn them on and show you on the camera. They effectively shine, you won't be able to see it. They effectively shine blue light into your eyes, not mm -hmm. as bad as it sounds. They kind of shine up so it's not aggressively at your eyeballs. Yeah. Um, so that we can help with that, that kind of initial response to, to the morning. We actually want a cortisol response in the morning. Like we want blue light in the morning for healthy circadian rhythm. And I think one thing that, the reason I actually bought them is because touching on that Scotland thing again, I definitely suffer seasonal affectiveness disorder, like 100%. Like, I, I am born to be in the sunshine. Like, I am a hot weather kind of bloke. I absolutely hate the cold. I don't like the darkness. I just want to be in the sunshine all the time. So in the winter, I definitely feel crap because I'm awake before the sun. Um, so I bought them, and I've got another thing called the Human Charger, which is the same, but it goes in your ears because effectively oh, yeah, 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 yeah. your ears have the same photosensitive cells as your eyes. Um, the human charger was great, but like, uh, I, this was an experiment, like yeah. we'll see how we go. And I bought it and within like, I'd say, I don't know, conservatively four weeks, I got felt completely different in the afternoon. Like my afternoon slump I was getting in the winter, gone. Even at this time of the year when the sun is up, I still wear them for, you know, 40 minutes just as I'm cutting about in the morning before I go outside because it's still three degrees outside. Let's be honest. Nobody's really wanting to go and sit out in that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think like considering light and considering light across the entire day, like we're not just trying to optimize one end of the day. You have to consider, I think, the bookmarks to your day, most importantly. So at nighttime, we're looking to block blue light, block it with the glasses. Yes, but also physically remove the sources of blue light from your house where possible and just from your internal uh, immediate environment. And then in the morning, we're looking to introduce blue light, be it through getting outdoors and just have your coffee and literally just allow some blue light into your eyes. Like just... Not only that, tell me that doesn't sound like a more relaxing start to your day, having a coffee in the garden before going to work. So we're already thinking about just improving people's lives beyond the immediate kind of biohack, if you yeah. will. Um, and if you can't or won't go outside or you just don't have the time, which is a lot of people, they're just not willing to get up that extra 20 minutes earlier to enjoy a coffee. You can do your whole morning routine bar showering with these on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like come out of the shower, throw them on. Um, just cut about like they sit over your glasses so if you wear glasses it's not a huge problem they're not that expensive they're like a hundred and something pound um they're from a university in adelaide so they'll be even cheaper over That's there sweet. yeah well i'm on cut about your morning routine and i definitely 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 feel a more consistent energy so that's kind of number one yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So that was re timer for anyone who obviously is listening to this on the podcast, R E dash timer, and you can get them in Australia where most of the listeners are here. So awesome to, to look at, even if you're listening to this now and you're like, what are these glasses he's talking about? Go check out a picture so you can understand exactly what he means. Um, okay. So what would be next, Matt, on your list of easy sort of hacks that people can implement straight away? Again, I'm going to go like left field again because like that's just like I felt like thinking about it before coming on, like rather than trying to like come on, I think people, the danger with podcasts is you try to just be as impressive as possible. And <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not, do you know what I mean? Like that's true. Like what's the like, the most intelligent I can sound on this podcast? Like I'm not interested in that. Like this isn't, a, this isn't an exercise in massaging my own ego. So what do I actually, what do I actively do every day? Like what are my big ones personally? So mm -hmm. the second one is probably the most, I'd say the most overlooked where blue light is probably the most talked about. This one's probably the most, the opposite it's the least talked about. And I think it's like the use of your olfactory sense. So, I mean, look at, for those of watching, I've like the size of this nose, like I can smell orange <laughs> aftershave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I make use of smell, like, and I tell my clients to make use of smell. Like I'm, very sensitive to smell as it is but i think like it's often overlooked i think if we um if we think about if i say to you, you smells think of, like talk about like the five most nostalgic smells one of them might be like your grand's house had a very specific smell you can go back to a specific place and almost a specific feeling very quickly like my grand's house definitely had a smell like sarah's dad's yeah. house has a smell 
Yeah. Um, I can I can be there. Like I, all I have to do is smell Sarah's dad's like washing detergent, like for the washing machine, because he's always doing washing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm in his house, and like I can be back in my grand's house with certain smells, and like these just they're very evocative, and I feel like you can use them to anchor a certain state. So for me, like you'll know that I meditate um kind of two for one here meditate every morning um and it's something that i've practiced for i don't know between five and ten years uh, consistently whilst i meditate probably three four years ago now i kind of thought about like cool i'm not really using incense or anything like that i'm not really that hippie but like my mom is so maybe i should get into this so i got myself some uh, palo santo wood or some white sage just two smells just burn it and like just allow that smell in the room before I start and just let it burn in a little tray whilst I'm meditating. And now actually the this, this smell of either of those things, like I can completely change my state in terms of just by smelling that because I've practiced being in a specific place and like chilled and focusing on my breath and, and calming the fuck down, which most people need to do. I associate that smell with those things and it goes deeper than that. Like I have to my side here that you can't see is I've got my diffuser on always in the office and I've got peppermint in it. And so this office always smells like peppermint. So like I associate work and flow and concentration with peppermint. So if I'm having a sluggy afternoon where it's just not really happening and you know, you're not going to, you don't want to put caffeine in because you are just tired. You're feeding a tired brain. Plus you know, we shouldn't really be putting caffeine in then anyway like just put some peppermint oil on your wrist or something like that, we're all good. Like all of a sudden now I've anchored that modern alertness in, in, in peppermint. And I talk to my clients a lot about using smells to anchor experiences. And if you can practice being better at something whilst smelling that smell, even if you read the Wolf of Wall Street book, uh, Jordan Belfort, yeah. he talks about a specific, he uses the boom boom stick that he sticks up his nose and he smells it after he um, sells like a decent trade or whatever the hell you do yeah. in if you're the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, Another one is, is, is around bedtime, like using another diffuser in, in your room. And there's a couple of oils that I recommend to my clients, both by Tisserand. One is, um, the one I like is Total De-Stress. And it's, a, it's like a blend, so I don't know exactly what's in it anymore. But it, it, I've used that smell around bed for five plus years. And as a result, if I put the diffuser on 20 minutes before I go to bed, I'm going to the bedroom, even if I'm pretty wiry when I go to bed, immediately I'm like, ah, right, I know what I'm here for. My subconscious, my nervous system recognizes the smell. And I think if you practice the same thing, again, compound interest, it's a magic penny. You can take the two grand and just use it once, or you can take the 10 million and you can do it every single day. And I think this is another example of taking the penny. So like, if you do it for long enough, you start to anchor your state and you can use a smell. Like I, I use four or five different ones. And I think it works really, really well. Like Sarah used the um, office oil one day in the kitchen to get rid of a cooking smell. Like what, what on earth is going on in here? This is absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is absolutely not the use of that oil. Like this is absolutely <laughs> bastardization of my concentration juice. But I think that's a really, really important one. I think it's one of the most overlooked things. And again, imagine you were um, like a, someone that gets anxious in certain situations. Maybe it could be flying. Maybe it could be before an interview. Maybe it could be, you know, in any situation that people generally find themselves in. What if we meditate with a certain smell? Yeah. What if we meditate with a certain smell and then, so, okay, you're now nervous before uh, an interview. Cool, just take one of those little roller balls that like you get them, plenty of different essential oils will come in a roller ball these days. Or you just take some um, essential oil on a napkin, a handkerchief, waiting for it, you know, just get some of that on you so you're not right okay all of a sudden the, the, the profound effect of like right that's my state it can completely and utterly change you and to just double whammy this into the meditation because i touched on it and although it wasn't something i was planning on talking about it seems relevant um i put a post up yesterday because we were in london at the weekend and the flight home was nothing short of appalling like just there was absolutely zero social distancing there's people like everybody wasn't wearing masks there's just like no rules were followed whatsoever it's just a fairly stressful flight and um i found myself just getting pissed off like i was getting really wound up with the general public just like an inability to follow rules and the staff were gonna get in shitty with the people on the flight and like they were getting abuse back and uh, i was like right okay i find myself my blood pressure is going up i'm not enjoying being in this environment so headphones in Again, I anchor my meditation in sound. So I use the same sound. I didn't have the smell available to me. 
But again, through meditation over a period of five to 10 years, and just like, it doesn't have, you don't have to, I think people hear meditation, like I said in the last podcast, and they think you've got to like bang miniature symbols together and float and hum and wear hemp trousers and grow your armpit hair down to your knees. Like it, mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. It's just about spending five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you've got, just concentrate, trying to concentrate on just your breath and trying not to follow any specific thought. But in that flight, I'm just like, cool, put that sound on cool i've anchored meditation in that sound noise cancel headphones on and just focused on my breath for like a full 55 minutes woke up and sarah was stressed at our eyeballs because she'd been sitting on the flight for the whole hour listening to a podcast but she could still hear it all and i was like oh, i feel good she was like you were sleeping i was like no i was concentrating on my breath the entire time wide awake and i think these are the things not not buying gadgets not 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 fancy kind of new age biohacking it's, it's like what's the real basic stuff what are the skills that people struggle with stress is number one in my opinion mm. so let's learn to anchor a de-stressed environment in smelling and sound and then let's use those sounds imagine you were stressed as shit at your desk and you can all of a sudden just use that smell and essential oil and a track and your noise cancelling headphones and just bring yourself back to earth so that you don't turn around and punch one of your colleagues in the neck I think that sounds like <laughs> It sounds like a pretty good deal to me, right? Yeah, hundred percent, man. And that's something that I didn't think we were gonna go down the whole smell route, but it totally makes sense. Like hundred percent, especially with the bedtime routine. Like Esther's got in the habits. Uh, at the time of recording this, it's the twenty fifth of May, and she's five weeks out from baby, so she's like in this habit of the diffuser on every night, and even just having that on. You know, you hear it bubbling and all in the background, but even just that, like, can kind of put you in that sort of trance like for ready for sleep but even whenever like you say you're wired a little bit you know you might I might work a little bit late at night and then all of a sudden it's like bang as soon as I get into that room that's on brush my teeth in the bed I'm like okay now it's time to sleep and the brain just literally shuts off 100% and I think like the one of the most important elements of this for me that I didn't touch on is I've introduced it to, to my son like so Nixon um it, I, I don't know. I, I can't remember from when I was in Australia. You know, Lush, the high street soap shop over here. Yeah, is that yeah. a thing? Is that a thing I'm over pretty there? Sure, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, they do, uh, they do, uh, it's like a bedtime spray called Twilight. So, if you can get it, buy it, mate. Like, um, and I think it's like you're meant to spray it on your body. It's like a body spray, but I spray it on the bed. Yeah. And again, it's like a lavender and all the kind of sleepy bits, like all the essential oils that have been any form of um, aromatherapy link with, with, with sleep. Nixon calls it sleepy spray and he goes and sprays <laughs> it on his bed just as before we go to bed. And I swear to God, it's like giving your child Valium. Like he has like, he has created <laughs> such a strong psychological link with that smell and falling asleep. But it's not even it's not even aromatherapy anymore, or I suppose it probably is aromatherapy in its truest sense. He's conditioned himself to associate the smell with oh dad, I can smell the sleepy spray. I'm really sleepy. It's like he wasn't he was running around the house doing cartwheels five minutes before, and all of a sudden it's like <laughs> it's incredible. So I think again the power of suggestion, like whilst we're on it, like I know you wear an aura ring as well. Like you know when you buy an aura ring and you get the plastic ring sizings, the, yeah, yeah. Like the yeah, so I, just, I gave Nixon the smallest one because he was really intrigued as to what this was. And um, I told him it was a nightmare ring. So uh, like, if I wear it, I can't have nightmares. And he's like, oh, wow, that's incredible. And he's like, I can I get one? So I went and found the smallest one and gave it to him. And now if he puts the sleepy spray on the bed and wears his nightmare ring, he can't have nightmares. Like, he's just like wow. that. And he explains the science to me. He's like, so what happens? It's complete nonsense. What happens that is like, it goes into my finger because obviously he knows it's got the little computer bits on mine, whereas his yeah, just yeah. has little knobbly plastic bits. It goes in there, goes in my finger, up my arm and then into my brain and it stops the nightmares from happening. I'm like, <laughs> if the power of suggestion wasn't enough, you know, already, th there you go. Like, you just need to convince your brain of, of being in a state and that for him is sleepy spray and his little plastic ring and the boy is like zonked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I like that. I'm going to have to, pretty sure I'm going to check if I've got the rings behind me. I'm going to use that in future whenever Evie has nightmares, man. That's a great idea. No, it's like, honestly, it's bulletproof. I think, like I said, the power of suggestion there, I think, but what's the film? The 51st State, I think, is like, have you seen that film? I think it's Samuel uh, Jackson. The power of suggestion yeah. is the drug that they give them. But it's like, it's pretty much what we're doing here. It's like, you just create, if you can get that smell for Evie as well, like, She'll love it because it comes in like a little plant watering gun. So like oh, yeah. just like all over their bed and that you can just about not breathe the amount Nixon puts on. It's like it's like a biohazard. 
<laughs> but, uh, I, I, why is that any different for adults? And I think like I say to my clients to take this one step deeper, one of the most commonly asked questions I get again post-COVID and I did pre-COVID from my active clients is like, I'm going away traveling with work. Maybe I've got a fortnight in London. Maybe I'm going to Belfast for a couple of days, whatever it is. I'm going to be sleeping in a hotel and I typically sleep shit in a hotel. How can I fix it? It's like, what's your smell? Like you can't take a bloody diffuser with you realistically if you're taking small amount of um, luggage, but you can take a handkerchief and you can take a small bottle of essential oil and put it under the pillow. Yeah. So now yeah. we've got that same home smell. Take your eye mask, take your earplugs, take some fade out if that's what you want. And all of a sudden now we've got that same home environment on the road. So it's like having that travel, the effect of where do you sleep poorly? And then applying the rules that you've employed at home to sleep well to the areas where you sleep badly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's massive, and like to the power of routines as well. But I think we're going to be manipulating the stock market after this because people are going to buy shares in Lush and Aura Rings after. All the parents are going to be like, "Whoa, these two products are amazing!" <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, mean like the number of parents I have as clients, they're like. Mate, my child loves that nighttime spray, sleepy spray. The next time puts on his jammies on the pillow everywhere. Yeah, I have to I have to look. I'm pretty sure it's 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 over here or something very very similar. If it's not that exact brand, if but not, uh, I'll it's oh, awesome! <laughs> delivery by delivery from uh, Matt Optimize is right. Um, <laughs> yeah, while while we're on, one thing I wanted to talk about as well because most people will be talking about. You know, we talked about certain gadgets, and while we're not trying to think that the gadget is a cure, we obviously spoke about the aura ring. So, I personally, for years, have worn a aura ring. Well, for about a year, I probably wore the aura ring plus a Fitbit. I recently got an Apple Watch, um, so I'm not. I don't really know how well it tracks because it says only like the first week. What's your opinion on tracking steps, sleep, using different devices? Is any of them more reliable or any of them better for certain things? Because I know people will use one and we don't want to ruin somebody's relationship with their Apple Watch, but maybe they're literally looking for the best thing. And yeah, sure. if if something's better, then they might want to. Like Guys, if you love your Apple Watch or your Aura Ring or your Whoop Band or whatever, I might say something slightly better. Don't take it personally. He's just giving you his opinion as well. So don't chuck your Apple Watch or your Aura Ring away. But um, well, what's your opinion then, yeah? So I touched on this the other day on my story. Um, and I don't know whether you're driving me this direction because you saw it or whether you've not and you don't, you genuinely I think are. I genuinely it. missed it and it just popped into my head there. So awesome. So, like, this is great because it's fresh. It's like, so I wear the Aura Ring and I've got a Garmin, right? And I, there's no way I would sleep with this Garmin because it's the big one and it's metal. Oh. But it's like, all it takes is me flailing my arm, I'll probably kill Sarah. So it's like, <laughs> it's also not that comfortable. Like, it's fine during the day, but in bed, it feels cumbersome. Um, I had an Apple Watch before. If you can make an Apple Watch last a day and a night, you're doing something fucking special with the battery <laughs> like, let's like rule apple watch out straight away um and then fitbit my opinion on a fitbit is unless you're a 45 year old woman you shouldn't be wearing a fitbit like so i don't know what's going on with you <laughs> but, like oh like, you know if i get a male client like i've got a fitbit it's like cool, did, did your mom stop using it They're like what so did your mom just give you it when she was done with it <laughs> like, oh, right, i'll buy a garmin like, well, like but joking aside the big point i make with all my clients is so we track sleep quality and we track sleep duration for sure and often that will be objective data from a device of your, their choice but actually i actively ask them to track two types of sleep quality number one the objective sleep quality or that's number two number one is actually their subjective sleep quality so the first thing i do when i wake up in the morning because i don't allow myself on social media is to open the aura app and just see what you know how what's the damage yeah or i open it I ask myself, right, Matt, how do you sleep one to 10? How do you feel? Do you feel refreshed? Did you have a good night's sleep? Yes or no? Yes. All right, one to 10, how do you feel? Nine, sweet. Opens up the Aura app. You got shit sleep. Six out of 10, you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired. You immediately relinquish your own subjective experience and replace it with the objective data. I don't think we have evolved to the point where we should be allowing devices to tell us how we feel. Like objective data is great, but for me, like, there are at least two nights a week where I will purposely leave my aura ring on the charger. I'm just like, yeah, I, okay. I don't, I feel like it's, we we're starting to lose touch with being able to understand how our bodies feel because we're just like, well, my heart rate's this, my blood pressure's that, my blood sugar's this, my sleep was this. It's like, all oh, this is objective data and I'm all for objective data, as you know. But I'm also, before objective data, 
I'd rather someone was in touch with like, how do you feel? Like, what's your energy like? Do you feel refreshed? Do you feel like you had good sleep? So I think like the honest answer is use whichever sleep device you like. I personally rate Aura Ring if I had to give you an answer to your question. So I'm not just avoiding it. Yeah. But even then, I think it's important to preface the data with your own, how do I feel? Because if you're just constantly led by how you feel by the Aura Ring, imagine you're an athlete and it's game day and the night before, like you're probably going to sleep not that well. Like even if you're, you know, if you're an elite athlete, you're probably nervous that like you're going to be in a stadium filled with people. Like I would, I would be surprised if most, most athletes don't have questionable sleep the night before, right? But they still might wake up feeling positive, excited, filled with all the right stress hormones, kind of a bit buzzy. All right, last night's sleep was a bit sucky, but it wasn't the end of the world. And then Aura Ring's like red, you know, when it goes like red alert mode and you've had a really bad night's sleep and your rest and heart rate's up 10 beats a minute and you're like, oh, wow. Like if you're traveling, it happens. Um, what if it does that? Now have we convinced ourselves that our performance in the field is going to be worse? Yeah. So like, I think there's a lot of lessons we can learn from like from athletes is like, if you treat yourself as the everyday athlete and you're going into an interview and you felt pretty good upon wake, you gave yourself an eight out of 10, feel pretty rejuvenated, excited and buzzed for your interview, ready with your essential oils and a handkerchief. And then all of a sudden you read your aura ring and your aura ring says, you slept like shit, you must be tired, have a nap today. And then, you know, when it says power nap today, <laughs> like I get that every now and again. So what now, are we going to perform worse in the interview because the device said you should? Yeah. So I think there's a real, there's a real danger with devices that we're so led by data that we forget that like biofeedback is data. Yeah, 100%. And just being in touch with that, I think is so, so underrated. And I think as an industry, we've kind of created this beast of like, here's your tracker, give me all this objective data. And I love it. And I'm an absolute slut for data. Love it. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same, that should be a hashtag data slut. But at the same time, <laughs> uh, I, I am definitely favoring a couple of days a week without. Yep. Cool. Unless you're. Like Go ahead. No, unless you're kind of like, if you're an elite tier bodybuilder, you need to know something like you, you need the objective data. Sure. None of my clients are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a big take home for a lot of people is that, yes, we can talk about all these different things that may help improve performance, but we need to also go how we feel. Like if you're using the retimer glasses and they're not working for you, then you need to listen to how your body's feeling. Or if you're tracking your steps or your heart rate variability or your sleep, you've got to use that data as a whole picture. And with the main thing being, how do you actually feel? How are you performing? Are you sluggish? Do you have that lull in the afternoon? You said four weeks with the retimer glasses, you stopped having that lull and you, you're going to keep it to that because nothing else probably changed when you first done those first four weeks. So you've used that objectively or subjectively and objectively to see whether you're going to continue with them, right? So people need to make their own minds up based on how they feel, what they're meant to be feeling based on the science and how they actually feel before they decide if they're going to continue with something. 100%. What do the clients say when they come on board? Like, or, or what do they say when they come to, the, to ask you for help? Right? I want to lose a bit of weight. The next sentence is always I want to feel a bit better. I yeah. want to feel a bit yeah. better. Like I feel Cool. So let's actually focus on feeling better rather than waiting for the device to tell you you feel better. Like, Do yeah. you feel better? Yes or no? Yes. Cool. Then we are achieving our goal. Oh, but my Garmin said I didn't do enough steps or I didn't sleep enough. Like, great, but do you feel better? Like, yeah. stop, stop immediately attributing success back to a, a computer. Like, I'm all for it. I'm a technology guy, but I, I still think we need to be very careful with its use and respect the fact that, like, you are the best barometer you will ever have. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's massive. And I think that's a little soundbite. I think we're going to finish on that one because... We spent about 20 minutes catching up before this and uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I've also written heaps of notes here, man, in front of me. So I think people are going to get a lot out of this and I think there's a lot of sound bites. I've written lots of little timestamps to um, clip this up before the episode. So, mate, obviously your Instagram name has changed since the first episode. I'm actually probably going to have to go back and change the episode description so people can find you now if they like that one. But how do people find you now based on the current username? So I am now at matt underscore optimize and the business page is at we are optimize 
Um, yep. You probably yep. don't have to change the, the username, mate, because I actually still have at the Muscle Mindset Coach. It just tells you to come follow me at, at my new pages. Oh, okay. So I, cool. I, I just have a blank page and it says we've moved. So if people follow the old one, they'll still find me. Okay, perfect, perfect. That works quite well then. So that, uh, that, that goes to show you a little business trick as well. Be as productive as possible with every aspect of your life. <laughs> exactly, man. Like, it, there was absolutely no way I was letting that username just disappear. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't want somebody else to take it, right? If you change it and then they're like, oh, I want to be the muscle mindset coach now. <laughs> There's so many, I've been on so many podcasts, mate, like I can't even count where everyone's like, you know, where can we find you? Oh, at the muscle mindset coach. And I'm like, well, there's all this content that exists in the world and people are not going to be able to find me. I'm like, there's no chance. Yeah. But pro tip, if you are going to change your username, you can't. So if you, if you vacate like your current username, it has to just sit empty for 21 days or 14 days. Nobody okay. else can take it. But then there's no like alarm. You just have to keep trying and hope that nobody else gets it before you in 14 days. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tricky, hard work. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. So, um, guys, go follow Matt. Obviously, check out the first episode. I'm actually not sure off the top of my head what number it was, but you'll find him if you look through the episodes. Um, this is going to come out mid June. I'm stocking these up ahead of uh, Baby Two arriving, so it's going to come out. I think around the 18th, if I remember right. Um, so it's one for the bank, but guys, check out Matt, tag us if you like the episode, and we will be back with more content. And and Matt's full of this stuff on his uh, his own Instagram as well, and he's also got a great segment about uh, the fish fan as well, which everyone needs to go and check out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that started since the first episode. So I gotta tell people about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you. Have a good rest of your day, and I will speak to you soon. Thank you, mate. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of The O Show. If you know somebody who needs to hear this episode today, please share this with them via message or on social media. Don't forget to also take a screenshot and share it on your story and tag me at Oren McCarry so we can continue to grow the podcast and help more people change their lives with the advice given here. Also keep the five-star reviews coming over on iTunes as that helps people who normally wouldn't listen to the show find it and get The O Show in their ears and drive the podcast forward to help more people around the world with the advice here. Have a great day and I will speak to you soon.